Now, this is when you want to come into your Luma, because I see I have a little bit over here. You can drag that out. Now, I went too far. You can see a little bit her, her neck is starting to disappear into the background. See, if I go all the way with that and the saturation, you'll see what happens. Open that all the way. Yeah, her brain goes away. Um, so I'm going to pull these down a little bit. And you just, just play with these. These are kind of things you just got to get. You'll know what to do once you keep um, chroma key a lot. And another thing, if your actor or actress in this case has a lot of frizzy hair, which mine doesn't. She doesn't have a lot of frizzy hair here, so it's not a big deal. But if she did... I would come to effects, and I still even put this in even though she doesn't. The color smoothing, let me zoom in here, the color smoothing button, um, this one is the one for hair. If you click it, you can't see a huge difference, but it does go in between a lot of the frizz, especially up you know, in here. It'll get some of these hairs that are dangling so you don't, they won't be keyed out. So that's the basic chroma key. You're going to go into detail and fix more softening. Sometimes you want to do your edge thin. I'll show you what this one does. So there, it brings in the key. If I go here, it makes her skinny. I, I'm gonna, I usually stay right here sometimes. If it's a bad key or bad lighting, you need to go up and key out more green. And uh, enhancing turns it really pink around the edges. But you can actually do a little bit, and you won't see the pink, and it makes it a little softer. So now that I've got that done on the first shot, I know that I lit this exactly the same. She's in the same spa uh, place right here on the stage, on the set. So I'm going to double-click this, grab the chroma key, and simply see that little drag filter button up here with the hand? You want to click that and drag it onto your clip. And you can see as I did that, it pops on in this part. Let me show you that again. I'm going to undo what I just did. So I have it there, the green, and I just simply drag it on my clip, and there, it's same key. You might have to do a little bit different if she's moving differently or, or something. In this case, it works for me. This shot, I'm going to try it here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there. The edges are a little bit dirty. I'm going to clean that up. But let's let's focus on the photo now. I know that I, I want this to be in widescreen, so I'm going to open it up all the way. And you know, this depends on where you want it. You, actually, I'm going to take it to 50%. And you can see what you're doing here. I, mean, I want a little more of the ground to make it to show the horizon where we are. What she She's in a park. Okay, we established that. It's a little high. Oops, I'm moving her. That's another thing. You can actually move the actress as well. If I want her on this side of the screen, sure, it works. I can leave her there, and she can go through the scene there. In this case, I don't want to do that. Um, I could actually reposition her right here. That would be a little better framing-wise. Honor the rule of thirds, but I'm going to leave that. Go back to 100%. Uh, one another quick tool is go to Shift-Z, and it pops it back to your full um, seeing the whole project. Okay, so here, this is obviously something you see the frames don't change. It's just her body is changing, her position. So I don't want that. That's a mistake. So... Press down B, get your little cut tool, and we're going to reframe this. I'm going to go back to 50% or so and reframe where I want this. I probably want it to be focusing down about right here. So I'm going to open that up, make that go about right there. So you can see it jumps here. That's good. That's about where it would be in the real scene. So Shift Z back to the normal. And that's a pretty good key right there to sell the, if you want to exactly just make this work really well, come to your effects. And under my favorites, I have my color corrector, but if you don't have it there, put it there. Go to video filters, color correction, color corrector, three-way right there. I'm going to pull that onto this first clip, and we're going to end up duplicating on the rest later. Color corrector three way. We're gonna. I'm gonna go in a tutorial about this later. How to actually match skin color. But what you want to do is grab this little eyedropper tool. It's really small. You can't see it right here. And once you actually get that, grab it, and you're gonna be selecting something in the scene that should be white. In this case, her shirt right around here is white. You can see it brings everything really. Her skin color comes back to normal because on the set I had um, some 
lights that were taking out her skin color. I put it back in now, but you can see that enhanced line that we had, that pink line in the chroma key. I'm not going to worry about that yet. I'm going to take that out later. But now I just want to bring this down a little bit. It's getting darker. As you can see, the light's on in the background. So if it's getting darker in the central park, bring it down a little the mids. There we go. Go back to your chroma key. And I'm going to turn down the enhancing a little bit. Take that pink out of there. And I'm simply going to drag you know, the same little hand button there, the drag filter, onto the rest of my shots. And you can see as I do that, it does a good job of keeping her skin color in. It's getting a little dark in Central Park, and it matches. So that is the basics. Um, let's see. Oh, I was going to show you how to actually do it without having the picture in the back first. If I had deleted that, this is how you would have been working in black. I like to see how it interacts with the photo right away. But there's different people have different opinions. And then I would just render this up. And you can watch it. I'm not going to render it all the way here. But uh, that's that tutorial on Chroma Key. Guys, check out other uh, tutorials. Subscribe if you're interested in these videos and want to keep getting them. And go to FinalCutKing.com. Still working on the website, but it's coming along. And we're going to get a bunch of more tutorials and uh, free tools, templates. I'm also going to be giving you guys a lot of motion templates uh, to get you started there and interested in motion. So check it out. Also, I've been getting tons of mail about what people want to see in tutorials. I can't respond to you individually, but I'll try to keep um, answering your questions in the tutorials. I'll see you guys later.